Hello, good afternoon, and you're very welcome to Live Line. news. That's great news. Uh, Doc Rooney. Savage is over the moon. Well, Wayne Rooney. I'm absolutely delighted, you know. I feel sorry for the Liverpool fans now, you know, right. because they're in trouble. And uh, apparently uh, Roy Hodgson opened the, uh, the trophy cabinet in Anfield and the prisoner are awful out. <laughs> 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 That's fantastic news, isn't it, Wayne? Huh? Five what years. About, what about this kangaroo? I mean, the answer to the kangaroo was I should have let him out in the doll air and he'd be used for a circus, you know. <laughs> By the way, I should tell people that we had Alexander on you today, the circus master, and he said he's never been in that nightclub. But we have a photograph of Alex. Looks like Alexander, unless it's Photoshop, with a wallaby who's not a man in his arms in that nightclub. But anyway, we'll put it up on our website soon to get permission. And Bertie's in the press for Bertie, of course. He's, uh, he's apparently things are bad with Bertie. That's why he's doing all the, I don't know, the ads for the news of the world. But he's actually getting a little ice cream van for himself now. Bertie, it's not Is Mr. It? Whippy, Mr. Whip around it. <laughs> <laughs> Sell, <laughs> Uh, but there's a husband and wife, and the, the, <laughs> the husband says to the wife, have you slept with other men? And she said, uh, no, you're the only man I ever slept with. All the others were awake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. He says, things are not going well. You'll have to wear your skirts a bit longer, about three years longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah. do love it, Jeff. But and just coming in, and... The husband says to the wife, I've just seen a lucky black cat jump out of the kitchen window. I know, you've just had your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> are you watching the Commonwealth Games show, are you? No, 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 no. Yeah, the Commonwealth it's Games are great. Yeah. <clears throat> the only party, yeah, the Northern Ireland shooting team. Yeah. Shooting team. You're good at that now, wouldn't you? Shooting team, but it's qualified. Because they wouldn't take out the balaclava. <laughs> I can still smell the winter green. See the goals that might have been. Standing there, wishing I'd been blessed, wishing I'd have played Joe, played like Georgie Best. And I can still hear the crowd roll whenever the other side had scold. Head dropped, trying not to get too depressed. Georgie Best. to the centre of Paris. I haven't felt so alive in years, Joe, and can I digress for a minute and congratulate you on the TV programme on the great James Connolly. <laughs> and to paraphrase Ralph Harris, there's room in my truck for two, Joe. So if you fancy a bit of excitement, you know what to do. But I know you I, want yeah, to, Joe. Yeah, no. What happened was he woke up one morning and when he looked at the paper, it was the fifth day of the fifth month, 1955. Oh my God. I said, that's unusual. So he went out and on the doorstep was five bottles of milk. He said, this is unusual. He said, number five, how did you do a bet? So he got the number five bus and he went, paid five pound into the races and he put 5,555 quid on the fifth horse in the fifth race. Wow. And it came in fifth. <laughs> 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 You know what? <laughs> he was saying, remember last week that the miners down in Chile, 
Uh, I was watching and it was really fantastic watching it. But the, the guy I felt sorry for, the fella knew he had a mistress and a wife waiting for him, but he yeah. came up. Yeah. He's saying things can't get worse. They <laughs> sure they can. <laughs> Smile at me, say hello, and I say, come on, let's go, because I'll tell you why. I'd be a non cool fool to ridicule your reasons for saying neutral. I don't want to patronise you, because I know that annoys you, you know, the feeling's mutual. I'm not trying to alienate you, I'm not trying to intimidate you, I'm trying to stimulate you, because I love and I hate you. I know you can sing like a truce, so get out of the mood you're in. It's not worth all the suffering. That's your adrenaline rush. Can't you see the futility of your extreme humility? So goodbye, Mother Hubbard. My image just crashed. Like me made Humpty Dumpty, I fell and got smashed. But keep me in mind for the Halloween witch. Sure, there's no room for pride if you've got to stay rich. You're just thinking of all those. Yeah, that's right. Man United. As far as it burnt there, Wayne Rooney's shorts. Well, you want to dance? Go back to money. Yeah. Well, but that's what he was saying. I'll just say the daughter, she says for Mammy, she says, Mammy, Daddy's gone now, he's dead. She but you're not a young woman, but you're not the type of bit of a romance left in your life. I said, I don't think so. She will, I like Larkin, now, isn't Ned Flanders? He's a lovely man, may have a date with him. She she will, all right. So late that night, <laughs> the mother came home, the daughter rang her, and she said, Well, my, how'd you get on with Ned? She had to slap his face six times. She, boy, did he get fresh? She, no, I thought he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was nearly forgotten about that brush, but the Pope was over in England, he was in Birmingham there. And, uh, when he was sitting on the big chair, all the leaders from all the different religions came to meet him and shook hands with him. The, you know, the head of the Church of England and all the different people to say hello to him. And eventually, the, the chief rabbi of England up to the Pope and handed him an envelope. And he opened it, looked at the envelope, opened it, looked inside, handed it back to the rabbi. And one of the priests said, Holy Father, what was in the envelope? He said, It was the bill for the Last Supper. <laughs> from the back of the from, back from the precipice in 2002 and of course that's a snide backhanded attack on me joe <laughs> and don't think i don't recognize it but it, you know you know that old speech or there's no one in the country now over five years of age doesn't know that speech about how he brought finnegill back from the <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he said he had to race he had to race michael ring to a couple of funerals in castle Bar. <laughs> and that was the last i saw him joe. <laughs> This is by Ireland's most depressed poet in no. Ireland's most depressed times. Uh, I remember that evening I flicked through the stations watching the news from various stations and programs and weddings and called around diners and round-the-clock specials on Rescue the Miners. And I sat there amazed at the whole operation and marvelled how tragedy had united their nation and I drifted to sleep in a dream filled with fear. What if that mine thing happened round here? He says he wants a memory joke for What uh, Doc there was telling me about the Pope. There was a story told about the Pope came over to Ireland and he was looking for someone to do something for special needs. You know? oh, so yeah. this guy went up and he said, it's my hearing. So the Pope put his hands on his ears oh, and he said, I hope that's okay now. Ah, no, he said, not that. He said, it's my hearing. It's next Tuesday. <laughs> 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 I was just saying, talking about the, there's a doctor in the Matter Hospital going around the ward. He sees a fella covering head, holding class, and he said to him, he says, uh, uh, what do you work at? He says, there's an accident at work. He says, what do you work at? He said, I'm a retired, retired now, retired window cleaner. And he said, when did you retire? He said, halfway yeah, down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not convinced of the level of, uh, like, of economic expertise that uh, the like, Kenny has at his own party, Joe, are definitely not convinced <laughs> of Enda Kenny's expertise in the like, kind of financial area. I know he taught seven times tables in Castle Bar when he was a moon tone or shooting, Joe, but, um, and look, as regarding, like, as regarding David Gilmore, like, he can't even count the number of political parties he was in, Joe. <laughs> so, like, between the two of them, but, Joe, I have to go because I have to catch the three o'clock in time. Where, where are you? Where are you on? I mean, uh, uh, audition for charities over the weekend. Good afternoon. 1850. 715-815. Stays open until 3.15 p.m.